Okay, great. And what's the business model? Is it pure play SaaS or you know, pay per trip? How do you monetize? Yeah, so we are the only free uh, platform, the only free solution in business travel. We generate revenue from uh, commissions that the suppliers pay to us, right? So it's like booking a common Expedia, but instead of uh, selling leisure or vacations, we're selling business travel to companies. Okay, can, give me an example of that. I mean, so like what does an average trip look like that a consumer is booking with you? And what's the kickback you pay to the hotel you book the consumer at? Right, so um, the average trip will be uh, your, your simple, let's say, right now we have a lot of customers in Europe, uh, US, Asia. So you'd have um, you know, a salesperson flying from London to uh, New York. Uh, they'll be staying three, four nights in New York, and they're, you know, they'll be flying um, you know, uh, British Airways, uh, staying three nights in Manhattan, um, and probably also uh, renting a car sometimes to go out of, of New York. So we, we, we handle the whole package. And what incentive structure do you have? I mean, if you're optimizing for, like, let's say uh, I'm making this up, the London, right, in, in, in Beverly, you know, in, in West Hollywood, is willing to pay you more kickback-wise than some other competitor hotel, but it's more expensive. What incentivizes you to keep prices low for consumers or these business travelers when your kickbacks are higher with other folks? Yeah, we actually are partners of, of the biggest brands you can imagine in, in consumer travels. We are partners of Booking.com and Expedia. And the likes, so we're getting the rates from them. We don't negotiate directly with the hotels. We get the supply from them. Oh, I see. Up, we just sell at the same price, and we're getting a kickback from the supplier, uh, roughly half of the commission we're getting. Uh, Booking.com or Expedia, et cetera. Yeah. I see. I see. Interesting. I mean, so is there a lot of money to be made in this space? Yeah, ton. So we're talking about the $1.5 trillion market uh, globally. So that's the yearly spend of business travel globally. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and but what percent of that actually, I mean, the majority of that goes to actually the hotels, the airlines, et cetera. Like what, what percent of that trillion, you know, 1.5 trillion do you see coming to people that facilitate the middleman role? Yeah, right. So uh, depending on which vertical, right? But hotels would typically pay 15 to 20 percent. So that's, oh, wow. you know, it's, yeah, it's a little chunk. And then flights, uh, nobody makes money in flights. So I think, I think Richard Branson's family said that if you want to be a millionaire, the best way is to start off a billionaire and buy an airline, right? So that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's funny. <laughs> We're getting paid a little bit on flights, but mostly on hotels. And then uh, there's a lot of payment uh, or commissions um, that are kind of invisible, transparent to you as a user. But for example, because we have the full volume going through our system, we're getting a kickback from the credit card companies, uh, interchange fees. So we have some fees that, that come from, uh, let's say, the back end, the piping of, of how, it, how it all works. Yep. A any other revenue streams? So kickbacks from the, from the you know, Expedia's of the world, you know, 2 3%, obviously fees on credit cards. Any other, are there any other monetization streams? Yeah, we have a, a, a dual um, a tier. So we have the free platform, which is you get the full product uh, in the free platform. And then you have a premium plat um, offering, which is uh, 10 bucks, 10 euros or 12 bucks for, per trip, which is very cheap compared to, let's say, American Express of the world. Uh, and then this payment gets you a faster SLA, faster service and easier payment terms. We can pay one invoice, one payment at the end of the month. But it's the same product, basically. OK, but it's pay per trip. It's not a SaaS model, like 10 bucks a month. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Will come? Will you sell bulk to companies for like a thousand trips per year or something like that? Yeah, we actually do it. We, we just sign up a big account and they, they buy they, they bought uh, bulk uh, for the full year of their of the travel spend. Yeah. Okay. And like, what do those typically look like? Are you talking like a thousand things, and it's for their inside sales team typically? Yeah, we count by number of trips, right? Because you you, you would have like one person flying a lot and one you know not flying a lot at all. So. Um, yeah, and then negotiate down. We, we get them a discount on the premium, so they got I think like twenty percent discount on the premium. Okay, but but I'm just curious, like what volume was that kind of deal at? Thousands of trips or a hundred k? I think it's a hundred k a year uh, in, okay. in, in equivalent to AOR. Got it. So hundred k a year. So I can take a hundred k divided by ten to basically say it's about ten thousand trips. Right. Something like that. Well, but there's obviously a little discount yeah. built in. Yeah. What's your team? Uh, so so actually, before I get more into where you are today, so give me more of the backstory here. So when did you launch this thing? Yeah, so um, I, I sold, as you kind of mentioned in the intro, I, I sold my previous uh, startup to Booking.com back in 2014. Uh, we did software for hotel management, so I've been in travel, on the business side of travel for a while now. Um, was that a meaningful, with, obviously, sorry, was that a meaningful financial exit for you? For me, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, the reason I ask is because I always find it's difficult to motivate somebody once they get rich. Yeah, I mean, everything is relative, right? Um, but honestly... If, if your only motivation is, is making more money, then you're missing something out. I think. So uh, I just enjoy creating stuff. I enjoy, I enjoy I, I write code. I'm, I'm a technical person, so I enjoy geeking out with, with my team. So uh, And then solving big problems. I think it's awesome to solve big problems and, and seeing people happy about it. You know, So yeah, uh, it's not only about the money, right? So, so keep going there. So you, said you exit that one to booking. Right. And then uh, we stayed with booking for, for a while. Uh, 
Um, and then I left because I saw this opportunity to get my co-founders. Uh, who are How many co-founders? Co- we started off with three. So we are three co-founders. Yeah. And then uh, we saw this huge opportunity and we, we, kind of, we went crazy. How come nobody is paying attention? Everybody's looking at leisure travel because that's the fun part. You know, you're going on, you know, on, 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 on fun trips in Hawaii or, you know, who know where in, in Barcelona, as an example. Um, and that's the fun part. So everybody's focused there. And then you turn your look to business travel, which is the same size of leisure, right? So they are roughly 50-50 of the total travel uh, market globally. And then you have a 1.5 trillion problem that nobody's trying to solve. Or at least nobody's trying to solve this way we think that needs to be solved, which is consumer level product, uh, great UX, free model, uh, best inventory, biggest inventory in the world, et cetera. So nobody was paying attention. Uh, and then we decided, let's pay attention. Let's, let's just go for it. So we, we, we left Booking.com and we started this business in uh, 2015, just the beginning of like three years ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and just going back, I didn't realize this was public, but it, I believe it was actually public. I'm looking at my notes here. The 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 for the hotel ninjas basically sold for what it was about up to 20 million. I assume there was an earn out and things in that as well. Yeah. I mean, this is the numbers were kind of made up by, by journalists. So we never publicly talk about the numbers. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, well, price lines public though, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so they, at some point, unless they rolled you up into some big thing, I mean, at some point they had to disclose that. They didn't, they didn't disclose the full number. They didn't disclose it. Okay, good. All right. So, um, okay, good. So back to what you're doing today. So you've raised a bunch of venture capital. Did you raise, ca- have you raised capital in the past or is this the first time you're kind of going down the VC route? Um, we kind of were bootstrapped before, not, not because we, we didn't want to raise, but just because nobody would invest. Like it was a, it was a very difficult sale of Hotel Ninjas, my previous startup, uh, where we had 200 competitors doing exactly the same thing. And hoteliers who are the customers who didn't feel the pain points. It was a very tough one. Uh, so it's the first time we did raise a bit, but this was like a uh, trial perk is the first time we actually raised a significant amount of money. Yeah. And you've raised how much today? 30? Um, yeah, a bit, a bit more than 30. Yeah. Okay. Good. And what does that take you through your series A, series B? Yeah. It's, uh, it's including the series B. Yeah. It's including we, series B and, 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 and what are you at today now in terms of team size? Close to hundred people. hundred. Okay. Are you cash flow positive yet or no? No, not far from it. Yeah, I was going to say, are you are you generally? I mean, where's money? What's that money going? Where are you burning? No, mostly payroll. Um, so right, so so the team we have a really good team, mostly like half, almost half our engineers and, and product people. So uh, even though we're in Barcelona, these are not Silicon Valley um, salaries. Still, uh, we pay well. Um, and yeah, so payroll mainly, and then just you know opex, right? So nothing. We don't have machines. Yep. And what? So, what are some of the internal metrics you track to to to, to determine if the business is doing well year over year? Is it number of trips booked or transaction volume or kickback percent? What? Yeah, we're looking at GMV, gross mergers as volume, right? So, so the total volume in the system and then growth of that as as kind of top line growth is 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 how we look at it. And in that metric, we're doing. Pretty well. We're doing 10x year and year at the moment. Uh, trend, uh, so uh, GMV, GMV growth. Yeah. Okay. And revenue growth is, is going, you know, hand in hand with that, right? So you know, revenue growth is also 10x year and year. Got it. And can you give us a sense over the past 12 months what GMV was? Yeah, we're um, we're getting close to um, triple digits, so getting close to 100 million uh, yep. a year. You think you break that this year? Yeah. He says with confidence. No, no, we're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, if good. Something great happens. You never know. No, that's good. And just to be clear, to make sure I understand this correctly, so the the past twelve months, you've done call it between maybe like ten and twenty. So you've ten x. So, so when I say ten x, I mean um, year on year, every quarter. We're looking at quarter based, and then year on year, same quarter last year. I see. I see. Consistently in the last five quarters. Got it. So if in Q two here of twenty eighteen, you're going to do call it. 25 million. I can basically say go back one year, you're doing about 2.5 million. Yeah. That's great growth. What's driving most of the growth? It's a very competitive space. Yeah, actually, it's not. You'll be surprised. That, that's again, that's really, uh, yeah. The, the one thing so about leisure is competitive, but business isn't. Right. Uh, we, we have a lot of competition, but it's not the same level, right? So we have like the old world, you have enterprise solutions. Uh, and if you think about, you know, the equivalent would be like Oracle, right? So we have Oracles of our world um, who are competing with us, but that's not almost, we're almost not playing the same game. Um, so what's driving the growth? A lot of inbound. So most of the leads, most of, of, of the accounts we have, probably ni- over 90% are coming inbound. Uh, word of mouth, we have good content, we go to conferences, we talk about it. We just, the thing is people feel the pain. Nobody likes the, their business travel solution. I cannot find one person who says, I'm in love with my travel agent, like, unless, you know, She's married to him, right? But yeah. that's the only time that actually, you know, 
otherwise they, they, it's kind of it's a it's a necessary evil of doing business it's like handling with a human on the other side of the line called the travel agent uh so we, so the biggest challenge we have is actually getting people to know about us and to know that, that there is a better way of doing business travel um it doesn't have to suck right it can actually be enjoyable it, it can be something you, you, you know that works for you um so a lot of inbound we are not doing an outbound at the moment we are we are doing a bit of referrals okay. uh, from existing customers so we pay existing customers for uh, successful referrals. That, that works well. Yep. Uh, and then social media, social media uh, ads, they work really well as well. Uh, before we wrap up with the famous five, last few economics questions here. So when you take a blended average of all your different revenue streams, on a dollar of GMV going through your platform, what do you take? 10 cents, 5 cents? What's an average, would you say? Yeah, between the numbers you said. Okay, got it. Between 5 and 10. And that's pretty healthy when you compare it to other competitors? Yeah. Okay. I just, I'm trying to figure out where you're building a moat. Is it just get the most volume quickly or do you actually make more per dollar that goes through you than anybody else because of your negotiation skills or? We have actually three things that are um, crucial for success or, 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 you know, let's say the moat. One is we have the biggest um, bookable inventory in the world. So we did some really cool hacks technically that allow us to sell every flight, every hotel in the best prices uh, you can find online or offline. Also, we are travel agent technically. So we have access to these kind of GDSs and the old world of getting inventory, which sometimes has the best prices. So you get the best inventory with us. That's number one. Number two is we have a consumer grade UX, right? So every other system, uh, and it's tough to say, like, why, why is Slack so successful? You know, the UX is so great versus IRC clients that we were using in, in 1990s, right? Something in the UX is just so much better. Like one, at least one order of magnitude better. Than are you, are you calling Oracle ugly? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would, I saw your website. I saw theirs. I would agree with that statement. Yeah. So, so the UX, and it's not just the, like the, 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 the design. It's everything. You know, how you interact with our system is so much better. It's a consumer-grade experience versus an enterprise-grade experience, which is in our world is actually very bad. And the third one is uh, we're using HI. So everybody's using AI, right? No, no. Well, at least talking about it, right? AI is the best thing, and, and AI is, is, is awesome. We, we are using uh, something really innovative called HI. And that's really, really good. So what is that? HI is human uh, intelligence. We have humans. We have people that answer your phone. And then whenever I, I, I laid a trap and I was hoping that you will, you will uh, fall into well, the trap. Well, I, I, I was happy to do it because you've been so transparent with the numbers. I said, okay, I'll bite on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the thing is that the platform works really well. Sometimes something goes wrong in your trip. Your flight gets canceled or, or something. You have to ex- like extend your stay, whatever it is. And the last thing you want to do is start chatting with a bot. Like you want to speak with a human. In this specific case, not all the time, in this specific case where 1% of the time something goes wrong. And then the, the cool thing about it is we have in-house 24-7 support team. Um, it's not very Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley things to say, but maybe it's something we brought with us in the DNA from Booking.com. Booking.com out of, um, you know, a lot, many thousands of, 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 of uh, uh, full-time employees, Around 70 or 80 percent of them are in customer support. That's something that people don't don't realize, and, and they're providing the best support ever, which uh, then in, in you know in turn generates uh, retention and, and reduces churn. So inventory, great UX, and amazing uh, human support, and we are the only ones who are free. So that's uh, that's also a tough one to uh, to fight if your business model is is built on charging very high commissions, like most of our competitions, uh, you know, the old world competition is. All right, Avi, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's the last business book that you read? Um, Delivering Happiness. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Jean-Luc Picard. Who? Jean-Luc Picard. From Which the, company? Uh, it's not a company. It's from uh, Star Trek, the captain of the enterprise. <laughs> There's a very good Twitter account called Picard Tips. So actually, I, I'm serious about it. You should, like, everybody should read it. It's a really, really good uh, daily uh, source of, of uh, you know, management uh, tips. Which the, what's the Twitter account? It's called Picard Tips. Oh, it is just Picard Tips. Okay, good. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have for building the business? Google. Number f- uh, four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um, five, I guess, five, six. That's pretty good. And what's your situation? Married, single, you have kids? And it it kind of connects to the previous question, right? So married and two young kids. So they're, they're in charge of uh, me not sleeping a lot. <laughs> good. Married and, and two kiddos. And how old are you, Abby? I'm 35. 35. Last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Uh, that's a good question. I guess saying no is also okay. 
So you should say no sometimes. Saying no is okay. There you guys have it. Founded Travel Perks a couple years ago after an exit to booking.com. They are focused on growing GMV gross volume through their platform. They're growing about 10x year over year. So about 12 months ago, doing about 2.5 million. And again, trips, business trips booked through their platform. Now that's up north of 25. They're taking between five and 10 cents per dollar through their platform. So you can kind of back into revenue that way. They've got a team of 100 people, mostly engineering, 50 people in engineering and product, which is great. Burning cash, but makes sense. And they can do it because he's done a great job raising capital at around 30 million bucks in a uh, in a hot space, consumer level product, and typically one dominated by enterprise solutions. Avi, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Much. Cheers.